The Institute for Health and Healing is a comprehensive integrative medicine program at Sutter Health, dedicated to healing people and transforming healthcare. Check us out at myhealthandhealing.org or on Facebook. Well, I have the best job here tonight because I get to introduce our speakers, and you're in for a real treat with uh, the two um, fantastic speakers we have. First up is Do Dr. Gina Serioko. Gina Serioko has practiced as a primary care physician at Palo Alto Medical Foundation Los Altos Center for the past 14 years. She completed her undergrad education at the California Institute of Technology received her doctorate from Washington University Medical School in St. Louis, and then she returned to beautiful California to complete her internal medicine residency at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. She's currently uh, a fellow at the Integrative Medicine uh, Program at the University of, Arizo University of Arizona Center of Integrative Medicine under the mentorship of Dr. Andrew Weil, and I found out a little while ago she's just about done with that program and we'll be meeting with Dr. Weil again in a couple of weeks. Dr. Serioko completed her functional medicine training at the Institute for Functional Medicine. She continues to be inspired by the body's innate ability to heal and she's passionate about using evidence-based integrative treatments for treating cognitive decline. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Gina Serioki. Thank you, Tony, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, introduction. Your genes are not your destiny. Prevention and reversal of early cognitive decline. The following will be a packed 20 minutes. I will show you research from peer-reviewed journals that the lifestyle choices you make daily influence your brain. Everyone will get a link to the recording and the slides in about three weeks. So I encourage you to just sit back and absorb this information. 5.7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's today. By 2050, this is projected to rise to nearly 14 million. I think this number is too high, and it's certainly going in the wrong direction. But I don't think it has to. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. One genetic component of Alzheimer's is linked to the APOE gene. We each have two copies, one from our mother and one from our father. There are three variants of APOE, two, three, and four. APOE4 has been dubbed the Alzheimer's gene. This chart shows the current statistics regarding lifetime risk of Alzheimer's. Notice that it's possible to develop Alzheimer's with any combination but if you have two APOE4 genes, the current stats are as high as a 50% lifetime risk. You've been dealt a bad hand. But what about the other 50%? There's more to this story than just your genes. I will show you how to stack the deck in your favor. This graph shows cognitive decline in normal aging and with dementia. On the left, in blue, is the preclinical phase. 20 years before symptoms appear, we can see changes in the brain associated with Alzheimer's disease. Prevention is key. Shifting this curve is possible, and I'm gonna show you five research-proven healthy habits you can start today. The first of which is the food you choose to eat. As Anne Wigmore said, the food you eat can be either the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. A dizzying array of popularized diets are in the media, so let's talk about one that has been proven to help cognitive function. Martha Claire Morris at Rush University developed the MIND diet. It's a combination of the two most well-studied diets in history, the Mediterranean diet and the hypertension DASH diet, with enhancements for brain health, notably berries and more vegetables. She took almost 1,000 patients 
uh, from the Rush Memory and Aging Project, recorded their diets, and followed them with yearly cognitive testing over an average of five years. The top compliant 30% after five years had cognition scores that were seven and a half years younger than the lowest 30%. And furthermore, the top most compliant 30% had a 53% reduction in the rate of Alzheimer's disease. Healthy food will shift the curve. The second healthy habit is exercise. Now there are countless studies showing that exercise is important in cognitive function. But what about brain volume? The normal aging brain shrinks about 13% in a lifespan. So using modern volumetric brain mapping software, we are now able to detect subtle changes on MRI. So this is my favorite study. Cyrus Raji down at UCLA took data from the cardiovascular heart study. Close to 900 participants had cognitive testing, detailed exercise logs, and MRIs. The average age was 78. So it turns out that the most active seniors, burning 3,400 calories a week, had 5% more gray matter than the non-exercisers. There was growth in multiple parts of the brain, but particularly in the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the part of the brain responsible for forming and storing memory. This is the part of the brain that is most affected in Alzheimer's disease. So it's quite significant that we're able to encourage growth in this specific area with exercise. And this is correlated with improvement in cognitive function. Exercise will shift the curve. So as George Bernard Shaw said, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. So do what you love. Dance, hula, zumba, tennis, golf, swim. Walking as little, one, as little as one mile a day has shown changes on brain imaging. Speaking of playing, healthy habit number three, brain games. The active study took 2,800 healthy patients over 65 they had them do 10 computer training sessions over a period of six weeks, four booster sessions at 11 and 35 months. Multiple short-term follow-ups showed improvement in cognitive function. And this improvement was retained even 10 years later with a 29% decrease in dementia risk. This shows us that the brain is capable of rewiring and strengthening, called neuroplasticity, and in this case, that wiring remained intact for over 10 years. The subset that did this was the speed of processing group, and they used Brain HQ software. Brain HQ has over 100 peer-reviewed studies demonstrating an impact on cognitive decline. So I encourage you to start a daily practice, 10 minutes a day, before watching TV, playing solitaire, or Candy Crush, or whatever's popular these days, Cognitive decline is not inevitable. Brain games will shift the curve. Healthy habit number four, mental health. So a show of hands, how many people believe that your thoughts affect your reality? That the way you think and feel has some effect on your health. That's awesome. <laughs> Becca Levy at Yale University took a cohort of the health and retirement study, about 5,000 participants dementia-free at baseline, and were asked to rate five statements on their attitude towards aging. Things like, the older I get, the more useless I feel. Things keep getting worse as I get older. Agree or disagree. They were assessed over four years. Those with positive age beliefs had almost 50% less likelihood of developing dementia. This highlights the importance of cultivating sense of purpose, meaning, community, social engagement, and gratitude as we age. APOE outcomes, APOE4 outcomes were the same as non-APOE4. So our genes are not our destiny. Positive age beliefs will shift the curve. So in general, we want people to feel good. So what gets in the way? Stress. 
Here's a graph demonstrating that stress damages the hippocampus. While mild stress can increase activation, intense chronic daily stress leads to neuronal destruction of the hippocampus. Reducing stress will shift the curve. Now, there are many ways to do this, so let's talk about one, meditation. Sarah Lazar, PhD neuroscientist at Mass General and Harvard, already knew from her first study that long-time medita meditators have an increase in gray matter of their brain. But she wondered how long it would take to actually see that change. So she took 17 healthy uh, volunteers who had never meditated before, put them through an eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction program, did brain imaging before and after. They were asked to meditate up to 40 minutes a day. In just eight weeks, Lazar found differences in the brain volume of multiple regions of the brain, most notably the hippocampus, the area of the brain responsible for storage of information, memories. So you might be wondering how you can grow your brain. Good news is that the mindfulness-based stress reduction class is as offered at Sutter and every major university and medical program. So I encourage you to sign up. Additional resources include a number of apps such as Calm, Headspace, HeartMath. Improving mental health will shift the curve. So healthy habit number five, sleep. So I bet no one here has ever thought of sleep like the rinse cycle of your dishwasher. So let me introduce destructive waste product A-beta, a peptide that is the main component of the dangerous amyloid plaques that contribute to the Alzheimer's brain. Here's a picture of the skull and the brain tissue. During sleep, there is a 60% increase in the interstitial fluid volume around the neurons. And this helps to clean out the A-beta waste product, pushing it into the outgoing fluid system. So what happens when we don't sleep? In a National Institute of Health study, 12, 20 volunteers were tested before and after 31 hours of sleep deprivation. What they showed is that the A-beta waste preferentially deposits in the hippocampus during sleep deprivation. A-beta damages the hippocampus. Now, the brain can fortunately recover from one night of bad sleep, but the reversibility of damage from chronic sleep deprivation is not well understood. So prioritize good sleep. Good sleep will shift the curve. So we've looked at five healthy habits for brain health, each of which independently slow cognitive decline. So any one of these is good, but what if we combine them? So this landmark study did just that. The FINGER trial is the largest of its kind, published in 2015. It took 1,260 par participants in Finland with just the earliest of cognitive decline, and they were randomized to usual care versus intervention. The usual care group were just told to see their doctor every six months, nothing special. The intervention group were given intense nutrition sessions, one-on-one -on -one and group, intense exercise, physical therapy, cardio, strengthening, and cognitive training sessions and computer work, as well as optimization of vascular factors such as blood pressure, cholesterol, and sugar. This is over two years. The intervention group had a 25% 25% greater improvement in overall cognitive function. And the APOE4 outcomes were the same as non-APOE. So I hope by now that everyone can see that cognitive decline is not inevitable. And your genes are not your destiny. So far we looked at five habits that can improve cognitive health, but are there others? So how many people in this audience have heard of Dr. Dale Bredesen and his RECODE protocol for reversing Alzheimer's disease? Good, a few of you. So Dr. Dale Bredesen did his undergrad at Caltech, my alma mater, got his MD at Duke University, UCSF residency in neurology with a chief here, faculty positions at UCSF, UCLA, US, UCSD. He has spent his life in the lab researching Alzheimer's disease. Having looked at countless studies showing every known modifiable factor contributing to Alzheimer's, he decided to put them all together. 
working on the first five healthy habits, and then optimizing as many of the others as possible. So let's take a brief look at some of those. Dr. Bredesen first likened Alzheimer's pathology to having 36 holes in a leaky roof. Since that time, many more have been added. But like a leaky roof, plugging just one or two holes is not going to do the trick. You got to plug as many as you can. Here's a high level view of how to plug some of those holes. So a brain healthy diet. Now Dr. Bredesen talks about the KetoFlex 12-3. This is a combination of a ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. I didn't talk about this today due to the, large, the lack of large studies and time, but I'm hoping we can talk about it more at the Q&A because it makes physiologic sense. We have the other four healthy habits. We want to maximize vitamins, botanicals like bacopa and ashwagandha, anti-inflammatories, antioxidants, probiotics, bioidentical hormones, which are controversial but essential, thyroid optimization, insulin sensitivity, balance out the good metals, get rid of the bad metals, test for biotoxins, be careful with the chemical toxins, remove harmful medications like Ambien, Benadryl, Lunesta, and many others. Adrenal health and cortisol optimization, balancing the gut health, and much more. All of these have been linked to cognitive function. So when you t attempt to plug them all, you have Dr. Bredesen's recode protocol. So Dr. Bredesen's first paper describing this came out in 2014, fairly recent. Reversal of Cognitive Decline, a Novel Therapeutic Program. So in his System 1.0, he presented 10 cases of cognitive decline. Six patients had stopped working or were struggling at work. Five of them were APOE4 positive. And after the protocol, nine out of 10 patients improved. All six that had to stop working went back to work. One out of the 10 patients declined, but he presented with late stage Alzheimer's. Early intervention is key. He refined the protocol over the next two years and in 2016 presented the next 10 cases. Six, times, uh, six with mild cognitive impairment, four with Alzheimer's disease, confirmed by outside neuropsychological testing. Nine were APOE4 positive, and they were in the program five to 24 months. After that time, marked improvement in cognition was noticed, and most no longer met criteria for MCI or Alzheimer's disease. So let me say that in a different way. Using a comprehensive, multimodal approach, 19 out of 20 of his patients with cognitive impairment reversed their disease course, even those with early Alzheimer's disease. This is unprecedented. So since Dr. Bredesen's papers were published, he has trained hundreds of functional medicine doctors in the US how to run his RECODE protocol. And to help raise public awareness, he put it all into a book published last year. The details of the recode testing parameters and supplement recommendations are all in his book. At this point, there have been hundreds if not thousands of anecdotal cases reported by integrative and functional medicine doctors that attest to the efficacy of the recode program, myself included. Fortunately, Dr. Bredesen has secured institutional review board approval and funding to move forward with a much larger study, and we all look forward to those study results. We need those large study results. However, I don't think anyone should wait to start making these changes. There's a lot to lose by waiting, a lot to gain by starting now. It is possible to reverse early Alzheimer's disease. Your genes are not your destiny. So I hope that I've whet your appetite today and just given you a glimpse of what's possible. Start working on the five healthy habits today. Here are some additional resources for you, and again, you'll get a copy of these slides. The foundational changes in Recode are things that you can and should do on your own. However, some of the recommendations, such as determining the appropriateness and safety of bioidentical hormones, advanced testing, choosing quality supplements, toxin testing, and gut health may require a trained 
practitioner in integrative and uh, functional medicine to help you implement the protocol safely. So I've listed a, um, some resources that I trust for you. Where do I start? Pick one, make it a habit, move forward. When do I start? Now, today. Changes in the brain consistent with Alzheimer's disease appear 20 years prior to symptoms. Prevention is key. As T. Harv Eker says, one step in the right direction is better than 100 years of thinking about it. <laughs> so remember, your genes are not your destiny. You can prevent and even reverse early cognitive decline. Thank you for being here today.